Hey, Dale here, and I'm working on the Camperine K4 design, build number one. I wanted to show you how I make the bows that support the folding panels and raise the tent. Uh, I start with good quality telescoping aluminum that I get from Texas Towers. This tubing has a wall thickness of 0.058 inches, and I use both a one inch tube and one and one eighth inch tube. To mount the bows, I use U-brackets that are commonly used for mounting toilet wall partitions. Uh, I like those because they're chrome or stainless steel, and so they stand up to weather exposure and they're really heavy, uh, heavy duty, and they're not expensive. I, I get those on Amazon typically. Uh, and then to make the bows, I use a JD squared tube bender. I'm telling you, this thing is the bomb. For making really nice bends in aluminum tubing as you are going to see in just a few minutes all right so let's get started all right so this is my uh, jd2 tube bender and i've got the die in here for the one and one eighth inch aluminum tubing so when you're trying to do a bow i do these in two pieces i do half and half um, so if i am doing a this is a 36-inch uh, bow, which means each individual piece is going to be uh, 18 inches from the center to the outside edge of the tube here. Um, so I subtract that 9.5 inches of bend from here to here because I know that's how long it's going to be from this point to this point. And I add... Um, whatever I need to get to my 18 inches. So in this case, that would be uh, eight and a half. This aluminum tubing is pretty easy to bend. It would be a lot more work if it were steel. Now I'm at 85, and you actually want to go a little past 90 because there is some spring in the material. So just to show you what I'm going to do, now that I've got these two pieces done, I'll take a one inch piece. It won't be this long. It'll only be about, uh, oh, probably six inches or so. But that, I'm going to insert that and use it to splice these two pieces together. And what I like about this is that if I tried to do one continuous piece, in here if i tried to do both bends in here i'd have to make sure that i didn't end up with a bend you know where the tube turns slightly and i get them uh, off plane uh, so by splitting this in two pieces i can make sure that when i join these they are absolutely flat and that these legs are completely uh, parallel uh, in the same plane to one another the other thing that i like is that if I didn't get my measurement exactly right, I can adjust it a little bit. So if I'm a little bit too narrow, I can leave a gap here. And if it turns out that the two pieces are slightly too wide, then I can trim uh, one or the other or both and get the uh, exact leg-to-leg uh, -leg outside dimension that I want. Yeah, I'll just show you what I'm going to do here to bring these pieces together. So I've got this uh, 
at a six or seven inch piece of one inch uh, aluminum tube that will fit inside these. And so I've just roughly centered it. And now what I'm going to do is just mark my tubes so I will know if I insert that here. how far I can go on either side. So I can drill, uh, put rivets in as far out as here. Okay. Yeah. Do that on the other side. I mean that is that is plenty strong. That is not that is and it's nice and straight. I want to get it mounted. Uh, those are going to be nice and straight. So now here I'm laying this out on the top, and if you remember, these widths were 18 and a half. So the total width here if this was completely straight it would be like 37 inches and that's right at 37. down here the outside width is 39 but what i'm going to do is mount these at 37 and that's going to draw this in you can see that i'm getting a, a consistent distance from the edge just because it's hard any other way to see if we've got this thing lining up all right, let's match that one. That's pretty close. So a quarter inch bolt of one and three quarter inches long. Obviously, I'm not going to let it go. But if I can get it to there, you can see how that looks pretty straight. We're going to finish up the, uh, the lid support. And we're going to do that by installing these stays. The center to center on that hole is like 8 and... No, 7. And 13 sixteenths. So I had a piece of scrap uh, corrugated plastic. When I made one of the last campers, I marked where the holes were for this bracket and where the uh, points were for the um, support leg that attaches here so that I could easily replicate because it, it's always kind of dicey figuring out where to put these uh, holes because when that uh, strut folds up, if these holes aren't in exactly the right place, it either won't fold flat or it'll try to go down below uh, and it, it'll, it won't work very well. So, all right, time to see what we've got here. So I sorted these out. I get these from a company called H.A. Gooden. I have a link to that in the post. And um, I really like these because they're super beefy. You know, you can get the cheap uh, lid supports, lid stays at Lowe's and Home Depot and stuff. And those are fine for interior projects, but they just don't really have any strength. Um, let's see how well this works. Made some small adjustments to it. I mean, the adjustments that I made to get that thing to lay flat were like a sixteenth of an inch. The placement of those holes is really pretty picky. And I think the next time I do one of these, I am going to go down to like um, seven and a half because I think that would get me a 
slightly better. I mean, this result is fine. You know, this is gonna, this is gonna work just fine. If the placement of these things wasn't so critical to get them to fold flat, I would move them back. But when I do that, they stick up even more. So that looks pretty good. Okay. All right. Well, all I have to do is do uh, one, two, three, four more.